In this video, I'm going to look at a visual representation of what goes on when you're running a regression and how the coefficients are calculated, where R squared comes from, and how bias can be created. And so we're going to look at these Venn diagrams. And they're not ordinary Venn diagrams. You have to really carefully think about what's going on with this pictorial representation. And so just to get started here, this yellow circle here represents the variation in Y, the variation, the ups and downs in the dependent variable that you're trying to explain. And so let's think about this dependent variable as being income. So we want to explain people's yearly salary uh, using some explanatory variables. And so this yellow is the variation in people's incomes. And so you can think about it as being Y, the dependent variable, but more particularly think about it as the variation in Y. So I'll put a big Y there. Now this pink circle here is supposed to represent an explanatory variable. So it's one of our X's that's going to explain people's incomes. And so this pink is the variation of X. And so let's think about that as being education, our first explanatory variable to explain Y. Now, when we run a regression of education explaining income, suppose this is the, the relationship between these two things. So let me put uh, X1 here, X1, that's education. And let's look at what these various parts of the diagram represent. So again, Y is the variation in income. X1 is the variation in people's education in the data set. This orange slice here represents the correlation between the two variables. It's the correlation between education and income. And so the bigger that correlation between education and income is going to be, then the bigger the overlap would be, the more orange we would have in this case. And the smaller the overlap, that would mean that there's not much of a relationship or a correlation between education and income. But let me just put it right here and we can imagine that there's a, a good amount of correlation between education and income. Now the, the more that the orange part, the correlation between education uh, and income is, the higher that correlation, the higher the R squared is going to get. And so you can imagine as two variables are more and more highly correlated, their variations coincide with each other, the higher the R squared is going to be. In other words, the more of this yellow that's covered up, the more is explained, the more of that variation that's going to be explained. Now, um, this other moon-shaped slice out here of X1, the variation in education, that's the amount of the variation in education that can't be ex uh, that, that is not related to someone's income. Similarly, the yellow moon-shaped part of Y here, that's the variation in income that is not related to education. And so if the orange represents R squared, the yellow is 1 minus R squared, the amount of variation that can't be explained with education. However, let's look at this other variable that we might have down here. It might be experience in a job. So this blue would be another explanatory variable that let's assume that it should be included as an explanatory variable when explaining income. The more experience, the more income. Now let's see, let's drop this variable here. We'll call it X2 experience. Now let's see what parts we have in this diagram now when we run this regression with two explanatory variables. Now look what happened, what's going to happen to the R squared when we add this second variable? Well the amount of variation, the yellow, that can't be explained is now smaller and so our R squared is going to go up. Now 
this part right here, let me draw a little triangle sort of thing on top of that so we can picture exactly what it is that I'm trying to uh, point your attention to right there. Let me drag it on. You see that overlap where the x1, x2, and the y are all overlapping at the same time. Let me make that green. It's not really a triangle there, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Here's the interesting thing that you need to understand when you're doing a regression. When we have more than one explanatory variable, the green part is basically thrown away for some purposes, now not for others. So, so what happens? Well, let's remove everything again. Now remember, this orange represents R squared. When we bring in the blue, what happens? Well, that orange is still there, and the R squared is only going to go up by the amount, let me throw the triangle over here, by this amount, this little intersection that is unique between experience and income. So this region in here is going to increase the R squared, but you see um, there's also this overlap of all three areas. This area was already sort of explained by the variation in education, the x1 variable, and so the x2 is not really adding anything to that region. It was already explained. Instead, the experience is only adding this region in here that I just set the green triangle on top of. Now it's important also, things are getting a little bit complicated here, so let me start labeling things. All right, so now we can see what I'm trying to say a little bit better. This orange would be used to calculate the estimate for the slope between x1 and y, education and income. This little slice over here would be used to calculate the slope and the standard errors for that slope between experience and income, between x2 and y. But this little area that's common to all three is not used to calculate the slope between either of these variables and y, and it's not used to calculate the standard errors. Why not? Well, it's impossible to figure out, since this variation is equally related to education and experience and income, it's impossible to figure out, well, which is it? This little area here, is it the fact that education, x1, is explaining income, or is it experience explaining income? Since we can't tell, we just kind of have to throw it away. We don't throw it away for the purposes of calculating R squared, however. Uh, and we'll look at an extreme case in just a second. But here's why this is important. Think about what happens as education and experience become more and more and more correlated themselves? What is going to happen? Well, we're only going to have a very small slice up here that's uniquely the relationship between education and income. Let me move that over there. We're going to have a very small slice that's uniquely related between experience and income. And look at this huge amount of information that even though it affects the R squared, it cannot be used to try to figure out what the slope is between education or experience and income. And so we're going to have not a lot of information used to calculate these slopes, which means we're going to have high amounts of uncertainty and large standard errors. And you've got to remember this chain of ideas. If the standard errors are large, ceteris paribus, the t-statistics will be small, and when the t-statistics are small, the p-values will be big. Now it just depends on what your purpose is of doing a regression like this. If your purpose is prediction only, if you just want to predict incomes, but you don't care what the important thing is, is it income, I mean is it uh, education, or is it experience, then you don't have to worry about this because you'll have a high R squared. But if your main job is to try to test whether it is education or whether it is experience,
and actually get slopes for those things, then that would be a problem if you have a lot of overlap between those things. Now, normally there's a little bit of overlap. This is the correlation, this not used area. This is the correlation between X1 and X2, between in, uh, education and experience. And this is a problem as it gets larger that we call multicollinearity that we'll talk about in another future lecture. So uh, one last quick thing. Let me throw in a variable that I, maybe is not important, just a random variable. I want you to just visualize what could happen. What could happen is that random variable could absorb all the variation in Y. Uh, or it could be totally unrelated to anything. Or it could suck out a lot of the explanatory variable uh, power of the variables that should be in the regression. So it's hard to say.